Back in the fall of 1995, I was in graduate school and I took a class on internet design. And to give you some perspective on what life was like in the internet in 1995, there was no JavaScript, there was no Java, and there was no, not much of anything. Uh, Netscape Navigator and Mosaic were, I think, the two browsers. Windows 95 might have just come out. This was a fall semester class, so it would have started in September 95. I'm not sure when Windows 95 came out. Uh, but when it came out, it didn't really have a lot of internet support. That was one of the things that Microsoft scrambled to add. Uh, I don't think Netscape had gone public yet. So Netscape going public was kind of the beginning of the dot-com bubble. So that hadn't happened. So the school was pretty far ahead in getting an internet class out there. And uh, one of the curiosities was that it uh, was a completely paperless class. All the homework was done on the internet and sent in via email, uh, which was my first class ever that was like that. The first assignment for the class was to install an Apache server on a Unix server. And so we did that. The semester assignment was to build a website and the website had a form that you fill out, uh, which at the time we would have called it a guest book. And that was kind of the thing because there wasn't much you could do with a website then. You filled out the guest book. When you submitted the form, it sent an email and it uh, saved your comment somewhere, I think just as a text file somewhere on the server. And that text file could have been read. So that was an entire semester project, basically to create a form and submit the form and send an email based on the form, like basically entering comments. I went back into my code and I actually found the code for that homework assignment and I kind of anonymized it a little bit. And here it is in Visual Studio Code. I thought it'd be really interesting to walk through this and see how web applications were built back in 1995. As I remember for the class, you had two options for languages. You could use Perl or C slash C++. And I went with C. Here on the left side is the web form in HTML. And on the right side is the code that would have handled it. The way this worked is the code was compiled and it would have been an executable file. And this is all running on Unix. The file extension would have changed to CGI. And I think it would have gone in the CGI bin folder, if I remember correctly. When the form was posted, the web server would pass in the request data to the program as arguments in the main function. So we have a main entry point and that receives all of the input coming from the web server for the form submission. That all gets parsed out and then you write the content. So for example, these printf statements would have written content back to the web server and then to the web page uh, had there been an error. So this was the error handling code. Let's go back and look at the form. Most of the HTML will be recognizable to you. One thing to keep in mind is I think this was mostly written in a notepad or, or some kind of crude editor. As I remember it, I was doing the work on a Windows computer. And then once I had the file written, I FTP'd it to the Unix computer because the only other option for editing the text files was VI and I really did not want to use VI. So my code file would have been written on a Windows computer and then FTP to the Unix server and compiled on the Unix server. So it was a little bit tedious to make changes because I always had to FTP the file to another server in order to compile it. Going back, let's look at the HTML file. And most of this is just typical header stuff. But then we get down here to the form and you can see that the action on the post is comment1.cgi. And my file, my code file is comment1.c. So as I said, that would be compiled and renamed to comment1.cgi and posted in the CGI bin folder. And then you just have your basic input statements. So there's not a lot to the form. What we have here is a selection of radio buttons that indicate what the subject of your comment is. And we have a text area element for the comment text 
And then our inputs are submit buttons and a reset button, which used to be common. You don't see those much anymore, but that would clear out the form. Let's go back and look at the code. So as I said, we have a main entry point and that passes in the arguments. All of the code prior to that, or most of the code prior to that, are functions that were provided to us to help you parse out the data. And this is, to me, really horribly written code. It really looks academic, like, like someone in academia wrote it. I have a lot of experience with C and C++, but to me, this is almost unreadable. Unfortunately, I didn't have to do a lot with it. But these functions were all provided for us, and the basic shell was kind of provided for us. And then we had to uh, manipulate it for our specific situation. So we check and make sure that we're doing a post. And we check and make sure that our application content type is form URL encoded. And then we start parsing out the form elements. For example, here we're looking at the subject and that matches up with our radio buttons. Here we're looking at the comment text and that matches up with our text area. Now we start writing out the output and we just do this with printf statements. So we're basically printfing all of the HTML out line by line. We have the body in the background and some of the information that was provided as entries. So the entries are arrays. This is where the form submission data gets parsed into the entry arrays. These are constants to indicate which element in the array is the one that you're looking for. Here's where those are declared. And then here is where they get set based on the counter. So we're going through and looping through all of the content to parse out the form data. We write out the results and then we write the data to a text file, close the text file, and then uh, write out a copyright in the footer. And that's pretty much it. This was a whole semester project to basically write this code. Now it's something that you would do in just a couple hours in something like .NET. But I thought it would be interesting to go back and look at the code and see how all of this stuff had to be done back in the old days, pre-Java, pre.NET, and really at the bare bones level of HTTP and form handling. So I hope you found it interesting and thanks for watching.